All right. So the purpose of this experiment is for you to determine the molar mass of a volatile liquid. This is a very common experiment. You will see it in almost every general chemistry lab book out there in, in some form or another. So like I say, it's a very common experiment. So the first question for us here is, what is a volatile liquid? It is something that evaporates readily. Things like acetone, uh, even isopropyl alcohol, they all evaporate rather quickly. So what we're out to determine is the molar mass. What is molar mass? Molar mass of a substance is the mass in grams that is required to give you one mole of molecules. So basically your, your unit here is going to be grams per mole, grams over moles. Okay. So how are we going to determine this? The grams we're going to determine by simple weighing. We're going to weigh a flask dry, we're going to put some liquid in there, we're going to heat it, to vaporize the liquid and drive off excess vapor, cool it down, reweigh it, subtract the difference, take the difference between the two masses, and that will give you the mass. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, how are we going to get the moles? The moles are going to be determined by an application of the ideal gas law. All right, so. Let's talk more about the ideal gas law here, right? So the ideal gas law is equal to PV equals NRT. P represents pressure, V represents volume, N represents number of moles, R is a constant, and T is the temperature. All right, so we're going to take this and we're going to rearrange it and solve it for number of moles of gas. If we re rearrange this, we, we could dissolve, divide both sides by RT to get M by itself. We rearrange it and N equals PV over RT, where P is going to represent pressure, which will be one atmosphere, unless you happen to Unless you happen to specifically know the exact barometric pressure, we'll just use one atmosphere. Um, volume has to be the full volume of the flask we're using. I'll talk more about that in a minute. T is the temperature. That's the temperature of boiling water because we're going to immerse the flask in boiling water. So your temperature will be 100 C, 100 degrees Celsius. R is the gas constant in units of 0.08206 and units of liter atmospheres per Kelvin mole. The point is, if you know the pressure, if you know the volume, if you know the temperature, and R is a constant, then you can know your number of moles of gas. So we will know the mass and we will know the number of moles, and therefore we're going should be able to calculate the molar mass of the gas. Now, pay attention to units. Real easy to mess up on units here. Look at the gas constant. Look at the units on the gas constant. Liter atmospheres per Kelvin mole. So if we're going to use the gas constant in these units. Your volume is going to have to be in liters. Your pressure will have to be in atmospheres. The temperature will have to be in Kelvin. All right. So how are we going to do this? What's the procedure? First of all, you're going to obtain a dry 125 mil flask. Okay, looks like this. It has to be dry. If it's not dry, either get another one or basically dry it out. It has to be dry. It'll mess it up, mess up the experiment if it's not dry. So we're going to construct a cap for this flask from aluminum foil and a rubber band. This is a very, you know, low-tech kind of thing here that we're doing. We're just going to put 
we're going to take this flask, put a cap on it, okay, aluminum foil, all right, and a rubber band to hold it in place, all right. So you're going to want to weigh the flask and the cap. So you're going to have to get the exact mass of this. Okay. So put the cap, get the flask. Flask has to be dry. Put the cap on there. Weigh the flask empty. This is the mass. This will be the mass of the empty flask. All right. Then we're going to add two mils of unknown liquid, approximately two mils of unknown liquid. An exact volume is not needed here. Now, that might sound kind of strange. Why would we not need to know the exact volume? Because we're using an excess. The amount of liquid we'll be putting in there, once it's vaporized, will be able to fill the flask many times over. So the exact volume is not needed. So, if you try to measure out exactly two mils, you're wasting time. Simply take one of these disposable pipettes. If you look at this very closely, these things are graduated. That is quarter of a mil, half a mil, three quarters of a mil. If you take it up here, that's one mil. So basically just take two squirts. Fill it up to about here. Put two mils in your flask, and, and that's good enough. And then you're going to make a pinhole in the foil, okay? Just a pinhole. It can't be too big of a hole. In the past, I've just used like a staple to make the hole. If you take a pin that has a wide point, that's more than likely that hole is going to be too big. All right, it has to be a pinhole, small hole. If the, if the hole is too big, all your vapor is just going to go go away. The hole is too big, and at the end, you'll be left with a flask full of air instead of vapor. So you're going to put your two mils of liquid in there. You're going to want to clamp this thing down, put a clamp on it. Not clamp it down, but put a clamp on it so you can hold it. Okay, all right, so like this, so you can hold it, all right, because you're going to be holding this in a flask of boiling water. All right, now, the water has to be boiling, okay? Now, why does the water have to be boiling? It's not sufficient that it be hot. It has to be boiling because water boils at a constant temperature. That's 100 Celsius or basically 373 Kelvin. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold this in the water bath until the liquid has just evaporated. You should not see you not should see any more liquid in the flask when it's done. Now remember what I said earlier that two mils of liquid is going to generate enough vapor to fill this flask many times over. So the idea is that's why we need to make the pinhole. The idea is the excess vapor is, is going to escape and you will be left with a flask that is filled with your vapor, the vaporized liquid. So you're going to, when you think there's no longer any liquid in there, you're going to have to use some judgment. You're going to have to raise it out of the hot water bath periodically and look at it. If you, if you take it out too soon, if you pull it out of the hot water bath too soon, your mass is going to come out heavy because you will not have vaporized all the liquid. If you leave it in there too long, all your vapor will escape and you'll be left with a flask full of air, in which case your mass is going to come out light. All right, so you want to hold it in there until the liquid is just evaporated. Okay, you're going to cool it and reweigh the flask. Now when you pull it on and you cool it, you should see liquid condensing back down. There won't be liquid in there when you first pull it out of the water bath, but when you pull it out of the water bath and it cools off, 
the vapor that filled the flask is going to condense back down and you'll have a little bit of liquid in there. You won't have as much as what you started with. You won't have two mils, but what you will have is that was just the vapor that filled the flask because all the excess escaped. Okay, so you're going to cool it, reweigh the flask. And you'll be able to subtract the difference between your two masses to get the volume of the flask. All right. So you're not quite done. I seem like you're done there, but not quite. You have to obtain the full volume of the flask. Okay. Not the volume that's stamped on the flask. It's not sufficient to say that we have 125 mils. It's not sufficient because gases expand to fill their container. All right. So let's look at this flask again. Okay, I'm going to take the cap back off. Let's look at this flask again. Now it's 125 mil of mass flask. What this means, though, is is the 125 is simply the last graduation. That's not the entire volume of the flask. If you were to fill this up with water, with 125 mils of water, it would stop there. What about the rest of this volume? Right? The gas expands to fill the entire flask. So you have to know the full volume of the flask. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to fill the flask with water and you're going to pour that into some graduated cylinders to get the full volume of the flask. Okay, so let's work a sample calculation here. All right, so let's suppose when you start the experiment, your mass is 89.5. 541 grams. That's the mask of the flask and the cap. You add the two mils of vapor, you heat it till the excess liquid escapes, cool it back down, you reweigh it. That's 89.831 grams. So we went up from 0.541 to 0.831. So how do we get the mass of the vapor? When, one more time, this is the, just the mass of the vapor that filled the flask because the excess vapor escaped. And one more thing, suppose we measure the full volume of the flask and find that this volume is 155, 155 mils. So our 125 mil flask, there's basic, you know, there's has a full volume of 155 mils. So to get the mass of the condensed vapor, we'll subtract these two numbers. So 89.831 minus 89.541 tells us that the mass was 0 0.290 grams. Okay, that was the mass of the vapor. The mass of the vapor that filled the flasks. Now, one more time, we're after the molar mass. To get the molar mass is grams per mole. We need to know the number of grams and the number of moles. So we're going to apply the ideal gas law. Rearrange it. If PV equals nRT, then N is PV over RT. We'll assume that the pressure is one atmosphere. Okay. Now this is where you have to be careful with your units. Okay. If R is going to be in, in units of liter atmospheres per Kelvin mole, then we have to convert this volume into liters. So, right, so 155 mils is 0.155 liters. R is a constant, and T is the temperature. And here's another case where we have to be careful with units. Right? R is in units of liter atmospheres per Kelvin mole. The temperature has to be in Kelvin to be consistent with units. Right? So 100 Celsius is 373 Kelvin. You plug this in. And you get how many moles? How many moles of vapor did we have? 0 0.00506. So we now know the mass of the vapor. We know the number of moles of vapor. So we're able to calculate the molar mass of the vapor, right? So that is 0 0.290 grams divided by 0 0.00506 moles. 
that is comes out to be 57.3 grams per mole. In this case, the sample that was actually used there was 2-propanol, which if memory serves me has a mass of around 60. So it actually came out, uh, it actually came out pretty close. Now, there, there's one more thing that I want to show you here. Uh, another gas law problem. Remember when I said um, about how those two mils of liquid we were putting in there generated enough vapor to fill the flask many times over? Let's calculate this out. Let's just suppose we were using acetone as an unknown. All right, so acetone is C3H6O. Suppose acetone has a density of 0.784 grams per milliliter, this acetone liquid. Okay. What volume of vapor is generated when 2 mils of acetone is vaporized at 100 degrees Celsius at the boiling point of water? Right, so here's our strategy. We're going to have to take, you have to have the density to solve this problem. All right, so you're going to take your volume of the liquid, right? You're going to use, you're going to convert that into a mass, then into a number of moles, right? And then we'll have to do a gas law problem to say, okay, what would be the volume of that number of moles? Okay, so from, from, from volume of liquid to mass to moles to volume of vapor. So let's first convert this, uh, our two mils into a mass. So we're going to take two mils times 0.784 grams per mil. That comes out to be 1.568 grams. Okay, 1.568 grams. Then we'll divide that by the molar mass of acetone. You, you could calculate that out. It's basically 3 times 12 we want to be sloppy, that's 3 times 12 is 36 plus 6 plus 16. 58.08 is a little more exact. So 1.568 divided by 58.08 is 0 0.0270 moles. So now the question then becomes, okay, so what is, what is the volume of 0.0270 moles of gas at 100 degrees Celsius, or 373 Kelvin. So again, we'll take the ideal gas law. So PV equals nRT. Now we're going to rearrange this. And we're going to solve it for the volume, right? So we, do, we can divide both sides by P to get the volume by itself. V is equal to nRT over P. All right. So, 0 0.0270 moles times 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per Kelvin mole times 373 Kelvin, all divided by one atmosphere. All right, so the moles will cancel, the Kelvins will cancel, atmospheres will basically cancel. This gives us a unit of liters. So, this comes out to be 0.826 liters, which is 826 mils. So this would fill a 250 mil flask more than over three times, three times and some change. Now we used a 125 mil flask, so multiply this by two, that would fill that 125 mil flask six times. So we're generating, so this is why we did not have to use this is why we didn't have to use two mils of liquid exactly. We were using a huge excess. And basically the excess vapor um, escaped out of the pinhole. All right, so that, that pretty much wraps this up. Thank you.